So, I mean, if you look at it from the start of COVID, the S&P 500, it was one of, if not, the quickest drop in the stock market since the Great Depression, or even including the Great Depression, it was down 30% in about one month. It tanked. I mean, it was staggering how quickly the market fell. And you could easily make the case and say that this is going to be really, really bad. I mean, instantly, the amount of people that lost their job just skyrocketed. If you look at the unemployment data, or if you look at any chart, it just pretty much goes off the charts from that point. We had never seen something like that before. The entire global arena is acutely aware that the United States is teetering on the brink of a recession. Am I right? I mean, the evidence is compelling. Plummeting housing sales, a decline in factory production, and the yield curve assuming its most inverted position since 1981. Even the most esteemed tech titans are resorting to workforce reductions. It's an undeniable signal that a recession's arrival is imminent, isn't it? Or maybe not. Perhaps not. Because remarkably, despite these indicators, consumers are steadfast in their spending habits and employers continue to extend job offers. Countless instances of this can be seen in sectors relying on discretionary spending like restaurants, bars, travel, hotel, entertainment and all of which are adorned with glaring help wanted signs in their windows and posted on their walls and websites. I mean, a clear reflection of their struggle to cope with the soaring demand of folks wanting to and willing to and able to spend money or at least charge credit cards. Now, it's conceivable that we may not find ourselves ensnared in the clutches of a recession after all, which would be a good thing. And this discourse further acknowledges both sides of the conundrum with vividly crystal clear transparency for the reality remains that uncertainty often prevails. And therein lies the dilemma, because we may see an expert analyst on TV or maybe even on YouTube or Twitter or X, I'm sorry. And it might be eloquently presented on the news, convincing us of the United States inevitable descent into a recession. And at that juncture, prudence and logical reasoning might dictate that it's not the most intelligent move to stick around and wait for the music to stop and not to divest oneself of some assets. Right. Well, Then enters another commentator on the news and their argument, equally compelling, asserting why the United States is poised to dodge the bullet of an economic downturn. Now, you have to ask yourself, what options are available to you at such a crossroads? How does one strategize effectively? It's imperative to recognize the intricate nature of these matters. And yes, hindsight never fails to present a crystal clear picture allowing one to lament not seizing the opportunity to safeguard their interests prior to the economic decline. The hindsight bias can make it seem obvious that precautions should have been taken. Better planning and preparation should have been made early on. Yet the truth is shrouded in uncertainty, oscillating between the potential arrival of recession or its avoidance and near miss, which would not be a bad thing. And let us not forget the complexity deepens as we grapple not only with deciphering the fate of the U.S. economy, as it has been stated by others, that the trigger has been pulled. And now we are left also predicting the stock market's response to these unfolding events. And it all seems to be as clear as mud at this point. It's conceivable that the anticipation of a recession is already factored into market dynamics. And should the recession appear to be of a milder nature, it might oddly enough propel the stock market upwards. Much like we are seeing now in this strange housing market paradox where the housing market is crashing up or a reverse housing market crash that keeps sending home prices further north and further out of reach for low, lower income earners. 
and in every case these situations surface demanding not only clairvoyance about future events but also insights into the stock market's subsequent behavior so when exactly will the market succumb to a crash as the title of this video provocatively suggests well the unadulterated truth remains elusive defying even the most astute analysts remarkably the possibility of it not crashing exists well just as much as the possibility of it crashing does right i mean this isn't a mere toss of a coin poised between two outcomes and personally though what can i or anyone for that matter genuinely claim to comprehend the crystal ball of prophecy eludes us all once again now on a personal note I tend to lean towards the belief that the United States might encounter a subdued economic recession, granted that unemployment manages to remain relatively stable. It's worth noting that the formal definition of a recession encompasses a surge in unemployment, signifying job loss on an increased scale. However, the public's understanding of this term often aligns more with the theoretical definition presented in textbooks that you would learn about in school and a recession materializes when two consecutive quarters yield negative gdp growth or at least that's what it used to be or how it used to be defined however a separate entity external to the conventional understanding scrutinizes a multitude of data yet the revelation of a recession often transpires in hindsight it happens six months, a year, or even 18 months later. This belated recognition, unfortunately, offers very little practical value for those of us who are working hard to prepare. Thus, my aim with this video is to provide you with actionable insights that may prove beneficial. Now, I intend to expound upon prudent actions to adopt if the foreboding clouds of recession tend to gather in the skies as well as strategies to employ if such an economic downturn seems unlikely. Safeguarding oneself during this period is paramount and create an appealing outcome, one where there can be a silver lining in terms of reaping benefits. Now, questions I get asked often by members and clients is, is it conceivable to capitalize on the prevailing situation? Regret regrettably, the answers to both these inquiries lack the allure one might hope for. And I'm really, I'm just being honest. Yet, no matter how unique your circumstances may be, my general counsel leans towards an overreaching principle. Avoid attempting to meticulously predict market fluctuations, and instead, rather, it's the length of time or the length of your engagement in the market that holds greater significance than an elusive perfect timing. Time in the market versus timing the market. The aftermath of a stock market crash often produces profound regret as hindsight seemingly illuminates an obvious course of action unexplored. Yet in reality, this clarity is a rare commodity. This serves as a pivotal point to stress, and most individuals are likely to attain superior outcomes by embracing a well-thought-out, long-term asset allocation strategy. Now, this includes and involves determining the proportion of your funds invested in stocks versus bonds, and most notably, an allocation that includes high-quality, short-duration bonds and can serve as a cushion against the volatility that your portfolio may face. And furthermore, as you age and the window for recovering losses narrows, this principle gains even greater importance. Alternatively, if you've transitioned into retirement and the capacity to recuperate losses has waned, it's prudent to minimize or minimize exposure to volatility as much as you can. So. It's essential to note that this isn't intended as financial counsel, but rather as informative content to deliberate upon and explore further. A perhaps superior approach in my perspective and acknowledging my bias is to collaborate with a fee only financial advisor. Now, you can conveniently locate one by searching for this term online 
Together, you can ascertain an enduring asset allocation strategy, subsequently striving to adhere to its steadfastly, and the peril emerges when fear takes hold. So let's try not to allow that to happen. The emotional responses driven by anxiety and uncertainty lead individuals to become compelled sellers during market downturns. Even if you have a significant reserve, equivalent to two, three, or even a decade's worth of living expenses, invested in stable and secure options such as short-term treasuries or bank-held cash, the psychological strain stemming from stock market declines can overshadow rational decision-making. Now, if you allow your apprehensions to take root, contemplate this. Suppose you've diligently amassed half a million dollars, 500K, just for the sake of simplicity. And let's just say, let's assume for illustrative purposes that your portfolio has dwindled by 30%, 30% decline. All these numbers are hypothetical just for argument's sake, of course. And in this scenario, that translates to 150K, $150,000, which is no small sum. It's not chump change. Now, reflecting on the effort and time invested, it's instinctive to ponder how many years or even decades were required to accumulate that initial $150,000, right? So, as many of you will agree with me on this one, as I think you will, the journey to amass that first 100000 is a formidable challenge. I mean, in itself, it's a daunting task. Drawing from my extensive experience as a financial investor and coach spanning more than two decades, yet over this period of time, I've observed a reoccurring psychological phenomenon. People often gauge their financial achievements in increments of a $100,000 window. They relate their hard-earned earnings painstakingly amassed over 15 years or other spans of time to these figures. And it's disheartening, really, uh, to say the least. It's a disheartening reality when they perceive that an amount achieved over significant periods can vanish in a matter of weeks due to stock market fluctuations. Reflecting on the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, the S&P 500 experienced one of the swiftest market plunges in history. Within a mere month, it tumbled by 30 percent, a feat perhaps comparable only to the Great Depression or perhaps even surpassing it. The swiftness of the market's descent was truly astounding, truly just mind blowing. Wouldn't you agree? Now, a precipitous drop that defied most, if not all, expectations, a compelling argument could readily be constructed, envisioning a profoundly dire situation. A point in time where people said, sell, get all the money out that you can. Now, the immediate surge in job losses was nothing short of staggering. And if we take a glance at unemployment data and we look at any graph, they all illustrate an ascent that defies conventional scales. Unemployment, it literally soared into uncharted territory. This unprecedented occurrence naturally triggers fear, yet the hallmark of triumph during these challenging phases lies in the ability to maintain a steadfast trajectory. Stay focused, keep your eye on the ball. Now, here's a noteworthy suggestion or rather a strategy that has proven effective for some and one that I personally employ with my own portfolio. Dedicating approximately 10% of the portfolio to cash reserves. Now, granted, over the span of a decade or an investment cycle, this allocation might entail a certain cost most closely tied to and associated with rising inflation. However, this reserve liquidity becomes invaluable during tumultuous episodes like the onset of COVID-19 or the financial crisis of 2008 or 2008, 2009. So it goes like this. When the market undergoes a downturn, having liquid assets on hand equips me to seize opportunities at reduced prices, a strategy that can offset the negative impact over time. Sort of like think buying on sale or buying at an extreme discount 
And even though I acknowledge that this choice might place me slightly at a disadvantage over a decade span, the potential benefits of incorporating that sum within my standard allocation are apparent. However, I adhere to this approach not just for its financial implications, but also for the bolstering of my mental resilience during moments of unease. It helps me sleep better at night, waking up feeling safe and protected and ready at all times. The prospect of acquiring assets at discounted prices counteracts the unsettling nature of market turbulence. It transforms fear into a sense of opportunity, a calculated maneuver to capitalize on favorable circumstances. Now, this strategy might not resonate with everyone, but I feel compelled to conclude that this discourse is typically what I do, and I just wanted to share this insight with you all. For those of you seeking more information, I encourage you to explore the video located above where I, I, I dive into the average income of retirees in America. Additionally, you'll find another insightful video below discussing five compelling reasons to consider retiring as soon as it becomes feasible. And as always, I want to thank you all for watching. Be sure to check out all the helpful links in the description and feel free to reach out to me with any questions or comments. I hope you all have a wonderful and amazing day. And I really look forward to talking to you all again real soon.